What's up guys, Man on the Moon here with another video. And today I'm going to be doing a character build guide for St. Paddy's Day Rosita. And I haven't quite decided if I'm going to pull for her yet. Like, I'm on Sullivan right now. Um, and I've been playing around with her just to see like... Honestly, I want to see if she's worth pulling for, because I think the missions are very much worth doing. Like, I think the missions are good, but, like, I don't want to pull Ultra Tokens just because there's missions up, you know? Like, I want to test out the character and see how she actually is, so I've been playing around with her. She's pretty good. And I just figured I would show you the setup that I was using while I was playing around with her. So, as usual, I'm going to go over the skills that I upgraded and the combat mods that I was playing around with and the weapons that I used on different teams. So, I hope you enjoy. But before we get to that, remember to like and subscribe for more content because it really helps out the channel. So, as far as her passives go... I think that for the majority of it, she does need to be maxed. She does do quite a bit of damage, so that agility 1 and 2 is really good. Obviously, we all know that. Yours is mine 1 and 2, and green shields 1 and 2. The fact that it's a 100% chance for it to proc... Every time you attack, it's that's just in my that's just so good. Like, guaranteed anything happening is really good. And with her doing basic attacks throughout her kit, like she does, she could be giving multiple people guard, you know, she'll be giving multiple people guardian shield, you know, her and one other teammate get guardian shield, but that's gonna happen every time she attacks. So, with like her sig being multi she could be giving it to you know how many how many is it on her sig it's oh i mean like on i yeah i forgot it literally could be the whole team by the end of her sig and that's turn 1 you know so there there could be guardian shields everywhere assuming she hits all those crits as far as the golden eye goes, I kind of messed up. I was like, oh, 100%, 100%, and I forgot that golden eye wasn't actually 100%. It's only 50%. So I maxed that. I went up to 15 on golden eye, too. I wouldn't actually say to do that. That was just me not paying enough attention. So honestly, I would say just take that to 14. That extra 2% chance or whatever it is, it's it's... It's not it's not that big a deal. I it I would say. As far as the mods go, I went pretty basic. I mean, she's an attack character. You're going to want her doing damage, but I kind of look at her more as a supporty. I mean, not it's not even so much that I look at her as. She is more of just a supporty attack character, but she does do good damage. So, I doubled down on the attack versus Crit damage multiplier, crit damage set, and then just attack mod. It's fairly basic, but, you know, she's already going to do bonus damage versus strong. Now she's doing bonus damage versus alert and fast. And I just wouldn't want to use her against tough teams if I could really help it, if I'm being honest. Although, I mean, she could be good against them just because of the, with her specialist skill, the 100% heal reduction on critical hits. She could be pretty good against them with just all the bonus HP they have. But if that's the case, I'm she's definitely there for support and she's not there for damage anyway. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing extra damage. That's kind of my mindset behind it. 
But if you got any better suggestions, let me know down in the comments below. Because she was already doing pretty, pretty good damage. So I didn't really feel like I needed to try and like squeeze tough damage in there. It just it didn't seem worth it. Now, as far as the weapon goes, I tried a few things. I tried her base weapon. Didn't like it. Um, to be perfectly honest, like as much as 100 AP, you know, it's the improved AP down. It's, you know, 100, 100 AP if it procs, but it's still only a better chance. And with all the other 60% weapons floating around, like that the eight you don't want her she's not there to control AP anyway. In my mind. Like if you're hitting somebody, you want them them if you're targeting somebody with her, it's because you want to take them down. You're gonna you know, you're wanting the heal reduction on them so you can take them out. So stopping and, and rushes just aren't that powerful anymore anyway. So, or at least not compared, you know, compared to signature moves. Like, signature moves are just are off the charts these days. So, I don't really care so much about controlling AP. I just wanted to do extra damage and see how much I could put out there. So, I swapped it to the 40, you know, bonus attack plus 45% attack when attacking enemies of more than 50% HP. Since that turn one does hit four enemies, I mean, it's four separate attacks. All four of them, they're, you know, on turn one, if you attack with her first, all of them are going to be above 50% HP. And then just the attack up, the, you know, same four slot that Ghost and uh, Duck had. And, I mean, it, it worked pretty good. And did a fair fair amount of damage, honestly. I do kind of like the 20% boost. I also tried... Mm, wait. I also tried... The one that I had pre-built with 1535. Now, unfortunately, the best I could do on the stat was 45%. Like, this is a perfect weapon. That was the best I could build to get that bonus attack plus 1535. Um, so I lost out on quite, I mean, a fair amount of attack. With this weapon, just because, you know, you're losing out on 5% attack and then 5% off, you know, the 20% attack on the force slot. You lose out on quite a bit of attack. Just to gain that crit. But her specialist skill is crit based. So I wanted to try it. And finally. I used the. Is it Axel's. Yeah. Axel's murderous deagle. And my logic behind that was. You know she already does do. You know with her specialist skill. She's already very crit based anyway and with that turn one attacking four enemies if you can get all of those to crit you could have four people confuse turn one it's pretty nasty honestly like this one was probably the most fun um the damage output was pretty reduced again just because well, one, there's no bonus attack on it. So, like, that turn one, I was hitting nowhere near as hard with the with this. But it sets up your turn two a lot nicer, I think. Just because then everybody's got that heal reduction. You know, like, for, for the, all the damage you do turn one, they can't heal it up turn two. And now you're just in a position to... Do what you want on turn two. Unfortunately, it does only last for one turn, but you know, it is what it is. You can't have everything. This is a good, I would say this is a good choice. If you don't need the damage, 
if you do need the damage, I would say probably just go with the base. Maybe do what I did here. Go with the base weapon and just slap that 45% bonus attack on it. Um, but that'll be totally up to you there. Those are just the three main ones that I played around with. Um, but as usual, if you see, if you know something better, I did think about playing around with the uh, bleed. I've got a weapon that's got like it's got bleed and bonus attack. It's stronger attack with burn or stronger attack with bleed. I can't remember which. But then it ignores defense bonuses in the four slot, but. Since she's got a 50% of chance of doing that anyway, just because of her passives, it just didn't seem worth it um, to even, like, test it. Because she was ignoring the, you know, that 50% is 50%. You know, she was ignoring it quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you think, as usual. And until next time, remember, guys, it is a game, so try and have fun. This is going to be your friendly neighborhood man on the moon signing off. Later, guys.